So we had the 13 inch head unit. I did a little unboxing earlier and today we're gonna actually put it into the car. So again, some highlights about this head unit is it's 13 inches, 1080p resolution, which is insane. It's a six core processor and it's 13 inches. Yes, I said it again, it's crazy. So we're gonna do an install today. I'm gonna kind of show you how easy it is. It's a double din setup, so you have to make sure at least you have a double din. And we're gonna be replacing um, my head unit today. So first thing you wanna do is take off the head unit. And so typically your head unit will look something like this without the mount, of course. You guys would have a screen. And if you guys were doing just a general car, there's probably a plastic trim covering it. So you just, you know, just plop it out. Do the best we can. I'm just gonna use my hands because it's, it's easier. And then when you remove the trim, there's usually either 10 mils or some screws. In this case, we have the screws, so we're just gonna remove the screws. Once you've removed your head unit, there's gonna be a bunch of wires. Don't be intimidated. That's just how it is. And you wanna unscrew everything on the back of this unit. So we're unscrewing everything. And you're already towards the guts and it's been really quick. It's been probably been about five minutes. I'm gonna take a picture here so I don't have to remember everything. Um, certain things like the backup camera is um, a little bit more time involving. So you wanna make sure that's okay. Yes, I can. So in your case, if it's an OEM, it's literally you plug, unplug everything. So I'm just gonna plug all this aftermarket stuff and we're gonna resume later. All right, so we got most of the wires out. We are looking at the new head unit. Now this, this screen is absolutely massive. Now in the unboxing, we kind of showed it off, but now we're actually in the car and you can kind of see this thing is an absolute beast. Absolutely. This is it's probably gonna sit like right here. So, yeah. And then you could also flip it vertically like this. And then um, adjust it. So, if it was sitting right here, <laughs> it's an absolute beast. Now, it might not fit this interior very well, but hey, it's all we got, so we're gonna do it and see how it looks like, because a small car with this big screen, that's just, <laughs> that's insane. Now, I can see this being more fitted for like a Lincoln Navigator or a, you know, a GMC or like a, a Yukon or something like that, or a truck, but <laughs> this 12 inch in a small car like that, it's just, it's just funny. And then it's gonna fit in kind of like right here. So I bought the pre-wiring harness so we can test it for the most basic st stuff. So it's just this, plug it in and then plug it in. So we got the reverse camera wire in so we plugged and play these two main harnesses, but then we have the reverse in. We're gonna hook it back to exactly. Oh shoot, is that Dr. Tran? What's up? <laughs> wow, I want one of those for my car. Yo, look at this. Oh, that's sick, man. Look how look how it's gonna fit. I don't wow. even know if it can fit. It's too much. <laughs> this thing's insane. Yeah, so we got the reverse wire in. That was the one thing that's not plug and play because it's just how it is. Reverse cameras are probably usually the most annoying part. So have your the reverse in wire to plug into your reverse signal wire so your head unit knows when it's in reverse. That's a big key. That's a big key. All right. So um, we're not gonna test the reverse just yet. We're gonna really focus on the head unit working. So we're gonna plug this bad boy in and that's it. So, oh my gosh, it's, it's insane. So we're gonna just kind of mock fit it. I know there's a bunch of wires hanging out, but we're just kind of test fit. Plugging this 
little baby IDE cable. My gosh. Let's fire up the car. Please work. Oh, baby, we got action. You gotta leave the door open. You can leave the door open. Need some airflow. Look at that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Sure. So it has a gyroscope so it kind of knows your orientation. Oh my gosh. Alright, so we got the head unit kind of mocked in there. I'm really surprised with the screen. Um, it does have that screen protector right now that's matte. What do you think of that matte look? Do you like it? or? It is a screen protector, so you could peel it. You can kind of see the red around the edges that you can peel it. But it really, in my in, in some of my videos, you probably noticed that there was mad reflections. With this, you don't really see reflections. Oh, it's the volume. Okay, let's not. Right? Yeah. Do you see any like it, you would see my reflections clearly? But with this matte screen, everything looks nice. It looks frosted, and it does make the contrast a little bit more dull but the benefits is no reflections which is, or less reflections right what do you think i prefer it being matte honestly and mm. if i don't like it i can always take it off but yeah i yeah. think i'm just gonna keep it so we're going through the settings we just tried bluetooth it was it is working um this is a new interface for me so i'm not entirely sure how to use it so there's bluetooth um you kind of you can hear audio right there um this kind of remind me this interface reminds me much like the tesla interface um it's cool to have the volume squ so even because the screen's so massive you can actually choose a screen like right there for the volume which is kind of nice because this car does not have steering wheel controls so having that big buttons and stuff or big touchscreen ui elements is really nice okay bluetooth music can't play maybe so yeah you guys can hear it and it sounds good with the EQ, everything set. I'm um, not sure if it sounds, I need to do more testing, not sure if it sounds good. As good as like the DSP models we've been playing with. But the, the sound is, you know, it's, it's good. It's not amazing, it's good. Um, so, let's, um, let's go through the UI a little bit. Just make sure everything is dandy. We can kind of see it's kind of tracking the car a little bit saying it's on its side or something like that a lot long it's not working we do not have the gps antenna or anything hooked up hard wire no radio right now i don't even have the antenna so aux there's aux on the back of this so if you want to have aux you can plug in your aux which is super nice and um there's actually a usb right here i wonder if i can use it for android the z link that ha i saw a z link app A camera it's just really cool app list so it's got some some stuff let's see if it works I'll plug in my phone first not sure if the Android is using this my phone is Android Auto baby what? No way! That's just insane. You got my Google Music. Wow. You know what would be a game changer? If, if you rotate it and then it, um, it like follows. It play. Yeah, it works. Cool. So, Android Auto is working. And pretty flawlessly. I want to see if I do this. With the U, the thing just... It did it. You see that? It did it. It did the gyroscope thing. Holy. You know, my mind's blown right now. My mind's blown. It just, it just works. It just works. And because the uh, interface is so wide, 
it, ha it basically has a little small window right here and so it says android auto a little cutoff but that's fine like it's working <laughs> it's you just you just oops <laughs> and the, oops and it just works i'm just shocked right now i don't have the i don't have the reverse camera hooked up yet but let's see if the reverse signal wire is working it just works we out here it's great so we're gonna wrap everything up make it look nice I mean, that, um, we're gonna hook up the accessories and then just wrap it up all together. All right, so we confirmed that the unit is working, so we're gonna wrap it up, make it look good. Um, first thing is you can you get to install the mounting brackets for your car. I use the OEM BRZ bracket, so I'm gonna take it off the uh, old head unit. I'm gonna put on this new one, as well as I'm gonna start wiring certain things. So I just put in the radio right here. Again, the main power and everything's hooked up. Uh, backup camera. I need to hook up that, which I'm gonna do. Um, that's kind of different for every car, but I'm gonna show you how I do it for this car. That way, I mean, if you guys do it, then you guys know. I'm gonna show you right here. So it says camera, camera in right there. This harness has video in, so it's, um, and this one has the RCA jacks for like subwoofer and stuff. So it's not that, it's not this. It's gonna be this camera in thing, camera in. And you just plug it into either your aftermarket or um, OEM. So that's how you kind of wire it. So this is gonna be how I wire mine. Just yellow with yellow. Um, that's a very crude basic way. It's very universal in that way. I'm not gonna go into depth into that because that's a whole new story. So now when you have the camera video signal in, you want to match it with whatever this says right here. It's, it only goes in one way, so but we're just going to look at this diagram. And it says, bum, 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 camera in is H, which is the far uh, right corner. Like that. See how there's a little notch where it only fits one way. And so we got the OEM mounts onto the head unit. It's followed by the other side too. And now we're just plugging all the connections. Um, these are like the aux cables, the USBs, etc. Um, the backup cameras in there. Everything is very nice and dandy. GPS antenna, which is like right here. So let's screw that bad boy on too. But remember, we have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, which might be the primary, like the way to go. But just in case your phone gets stolen or lost, it's nice to have a backup, like a, kind of like a TomTom or Garmin GPS. Those don't use data, they just use the GPS antenna to um, do its thing. So we have it kind of mounted, and then we have the last plug to the, like, the last piece of the puzzle. Oh, we still have the antenna too so um radio antenna you can buy these radio antennas off of like metra for cheap 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 too i'll put a link down below if you guys were looking for harnesses and stuff all right pull this puppy back in for like the third time because i put the mountings upside down all right and we're squeezing okay so sometimes you get to watch for these wires especially this hdmi it's a little bit of a thicker cable Bada boom, there's little like plastic little guiding holes and we're in. Got it, we got it nice and mounted. Let's put back this trim piece, making it look Gucci. Make sure. We do what we must. All right, look at that, we have it installed. Check it out. Now notice that we have it pretty sunk in back there, giving it that nice fitment right here. Uh, before I had the mounting points like in the normal spot and it kind of protruded out. So I have the double din really sunk back in there. So if you have room back in your car, you can, I would highly recommend it. Now it does block your vents a little bit or um, a lot of it. 
so you can you can move it and stuff like that with the little hinge so so you want it like that so now um, from this angle you have uh, a little bit more vent clearance you can also flip it vertically giving you a little more clearance right there too but yeah Let's fire it on. Uh, start your car so it doesn't die. 